Three against one. Back it comes. Goal! It's called the beautiful game. Soccer in the United States, football everywhere else in the world. For Nandy Price, it was her life. I was arguably the number one recruit in the country. Four games into my freshman season, pretty routine tackle. I just go in with a girl into a tackle and she completely missed the ball and kicked my leg and my tibia snapped in half. It breaks my heart to see you suffering Cause I am for you I'm not against you This is GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Scotty Campbell along with Phil Fleischman. Phil, I'm thinking this episode of GPS is especially interesting to you because of the soccer angle. Oh, you know it, Scotty. I love to play soccer. I, I wish there was some way I could figure out how to make it a second career. For that reason, Nandy Price's story is fascinating to me. But I'll tell you what makes it an even better story is Nandy herself. I mean, the joy of the Lord just radiates from this young woman. In a big way. And it's amazing to me how God took... The most challenging of circumstances, somebody who had really brought herself to the pinnacle of her sport and then used the loss of that, Christ leverages that and turns it into a real rebirth in her life. GPS. God. People. Stories. When Nandy Price kicked her first soccer ball, she didn't know where it would take her. I started playing soccer when I was probably 10 years old, which even back then was pretty late. Um, My parents are Jamaican, and so there's a, a huge cultural aspect of soccer for me. Nandy's parents are from Jamaica, but they raised her in Florida. They have always just said, you know, go for it, like whatever you want to do. And I became completely obsessed with the sport. The nuances of how to turn my foot this way to make the ball spin this way. And I think even culturally, um, I just loved it. Fell in love with all the nuances and probably pretty early around 13 or 14, I started dreaming about World Cup and dreaming about Olympic games and dreaming about standing on a podium and leading a team pretty young. I mean, that's pretty young to be having those kind of thoughts. It's not a twist of fate. We choose our own destiny. A trophy or a bruise. Champions never lose. I was that girl that would kick the ball off the garage door for hours and hours and hours. And I was like, I mean, my parents would be like, okay, enough already. And I would come inside and bring my ball inside, kick off the back of the couch. I mean, I was, I was completely enamored with it. Nandy made her first national team when she was about 16, and it was at about the same time when she began to realize that soccer was, as she put it, what I would give everything to do. So then at 17, I was um, named an Olympic alternate. I was flown out to San Diego, California from Florida and trained with the U.S. women's national team for about a year. And that was the 99 World Cup team, like Mia Hamm and Brandy Chessing and some of the best players in the world, players that I Coincidentally, had posters of them on my walls. And I was like, I'm passing with Brandy Chastain. This is so cool. And trained with them for the 2000 Olympics and uh, went on campus at UCLA for college and got a phone call from US Soccer and I, they wanted me to be an Olympic alternate and felt like all of my dreams were like all coming true. So in her freshman year at UCLA, Nandy's a rising national soccer star, but things are about to change very quickly. At that time, it was a huge deal to even be named with that group of players that were so pioneering and idols of mine. And having not grown up in a Christian home, I mean, I poured everything I could into my sport. And about three weeks later, we started at the first games of our season, and I was arguably the number one recruit in the country, so it was a huge deal um, to be on campus and, and to play at a school that was kind of coming up in soccer. And four games into my freshman season, pretty routine tackle. I just go in with a girl into a tackle, and she completely missed the ball and kicked my leg, and my tibia snapped in half. It breaks my heart to see you suffering, because I am full. I mean, devastating doesn't even, I mean, explain it. I found myself laying on the floor. 
I had never had an ankle sprain. I was not that girl that had knee problems. I had never had an injury at all. Trained six, sometimes seven days a week. Missed graduations to train. Trained on Christmas Day. I was that girl. And so to have my first injury, it was just devastating. So let's make sure the timeline is clear here. Nandy suffered that devastating injury just days before the start of the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, Australia. So instead of flying to Sydney as an alternate on the U.S. Olympic team, Nandy is lying in a hospital bed. And trying to figure out what what in the world just happened. Like all of what I have built and all of what I've poured myself into and all of my dreams of holding a World Cup trophy had now been completely, just everything was flipped upside down and I didn't know how to rebuild that, I had no idea. While Nandy began trying to make sense of her life and what just happened, doctors were working on fixing her broken leg. To do that, they eventually had to perform two different surgeries. Because my first one had a lot of complications they didn't find until later. So an injury that could, I could have been back on the field in about three months, took me a little over a year to get back on the field. And so found myself probably eight or nine games into my sophomore season, like still trying to find my way. I mean, I had to learn how to walk again. And so I continued to play. And luckily I played two full seasons, my junior and senior seasons at UCLA and was able to captain those teams and ended up going to a final four, which is a huge deal for us. I'm stepping out with Even though Nandy was back on the field playing soccer, back to a very familiar place, everything was different. After she broke her leg, still in her freshman year at UCLA, Nandy gave her life to Jesus. And suddenly, her priorities got all switched around. Woke up from a dream with a song in my head. I still hear the beat, can't remember what it said. I think I found myself after that first injury, kind of questioning where soccer really fit for me. Still, even after I graduated college, I played for probably two years with the national team. And and even after that, got phone calls from two different national team coaches asking me to train and come back, that they had watched film or seen video and said, we need a center back, which is the position that I played. We need someone like, will you please come back and train? And just found myself having to really weigh Um, wanting to be in full-time ministry and doing my sport. But there were opportunities, but there was nothing like being part of such a momentous team with, with the best players, really, that the sport's really ever seen. That Nandy was even considering full-time ministry, or anything for that matter, over soccer, was a pretty clear indication of the work Jesus was doing in her life. Growing up, my parents, great people, wonderful, um, but we didn't go to church, really didn't have spiritual conversations or anything like that. And so I kind of had this awareness and there were people in my life that, you know, I had a friend that I played soccer with that like sent me a Bible one time and I was kind of like, what is this? This is a little weird. Like, I don't know what's going on. And then had another friend who would say things like, I'm praying for you. And I didn't have any awareness of that, but I remember always knowing like, there's got to be a God out there. Like, I don't know how that works, but even at a young age, I really was relatively aware of that, but it was never something that my family and I ever really pursued. And then entering college as an Olympic alternate, Nandy was on top of the world. There was nothing that I had wanted to achieve at that point in my life where there had been any gaps or holes or anything like that. I always got really what I wanted and what I put myself into, I always achieved. And so my freshman year on the field when I got kicked and and that injury happened and my leg snapped in half, I remember laying um, in the hospital bed for like almost five days and just gives you a lot of time to think and I found myself going this can't be the end of the story like life can't be about this I could search down here for the rest of my life and this one thing is all that I find that only you can A 
Christian friend of Nandy's would soon help her realize that she was right, that life is about more than soccer. I remember I was on the north side of campus and um, I got out of a three hour seminar class and was sitting on as, you know, as the story goes, like under a spotlight, of course, you know, on a bench on the north side of campus and it's dark and, and I put my crutches down and I remember just I didn't know what I was doing, but I remember starting to ask some of the big questions like there's got to be more to life than this. And this can't be all that there is. Like, I I can't believe I'm really depressed over a game like this doesn't make a ton of sense and started kind of verbalizing some of those questions. So I'll take all these broken dreams and petty things, replace them with something that's true. And then it might have been a week or so later, that same friend said, hey, you should come to this Christian Bible study that we have. Little does she know that I'm having these conversations with God and my first day on campus, I'm buying a Bible for I don't even know what reason. And I go and to this, you know, small group meeting, there's maybe 25 athletes and it's different because I'm like, people are like singing or, they're, you know, they're like, their eyes are closed and they're praying. Like, I don't know what's going on. And I met the campus ministry leader. His wife um, said that she would just answer my questions. So six weeks or so of her just answering my questions and being really sweet and normal and helping me. Polly Pavilion, basketball stadium at UCLA, she said, I think you're ready to give your heart to Christ. And I remember just saying, yes, like, I know I'm ready. And in that moment, feeling a marked change. Have you ever felt that marked change that Nandy Price experienced? You can, right now. Learn more by going to billygramradio.org and clicking on Grow Your Faith at the top of the page. billygramradio.org. As for Nandy, her story continues. She's in seminary working on a master's in theology, but she still keeps her hands, or her feet, I should say, in soccer, giving lessons and that kind of thing. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Do you know what believe means in the Bible? What, it, what faith is in the Bible? It means that you put your total weight on Christ. Billy Graham. It's the story that I told the other night. I'll tell it again about this fellow that came over from France and he announced that he was going to put a tight rope across Niagara Falls and he was going to walk across it. Well, a big crowd of people gathered on both sides of the river and they watched. And sure enough, he walked over and he walked back and they applauded. He did it two or three times and then he took a wheelbarrow and he put 200 pounds of dirt in it and rolled it over and rolled it back. Then he asked, how many of you believe I can roll a man across? And they said, oh, we know you can do it. And so there was one man in the front row that was quite enthusiastic about it. And he said, sir, he said, would you mind stepping in the wheelbarrow and being the first man? Well, that man was gone. I don't blame him. But you see, that's what faith is. You put your total weight in the wheelbarrow. You put your total weight on Christ. Now back to the hosts of GPS, Phil Fleischman and Scotty Campbell. Billy Graham was 74 years old in that clip we just heard. Now he's turning 97. Yeah, 97, Scotty. He was born in 1918, right around the end of World War I. His birthday is November 7th. The war was officially over November 11th. Um, so November 7th, Billy Graham is 97. And the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is marking his birthday with the release of the new My Hope film. Yeah, that film is titled Value of a Soul. It features the stories of three people who saw God work in a big way in their lives. It also includes a powerful message from Franklin Graham. And you can get a free DVD of Value of a Soul, or you can watch it online. Just go to myhopewithbillygram.org. That's myhopewithbillygram.org. And you know what? If you'd like to leave a birthday greeting for Mr. Graham, you can do that at the Billy Graham Radio Facebook page. Just leave it in the comments section of where we posted this episode of GPS. Again, look for Billy Graham Radio on Facebook. Yeah, and let us know your thoughts on GPS. And if you have a story to share, we love hearing from you. 
By the way, Hawk Nelson provided the music you heard on this episode of GPS. We featured several songs from their newest album, Diamonds. We'll post a new episode of GPS on Wednesday. Thanks for listening to this episode. I'm Scotty Campbell. And I'm Phil Fleischman. GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news.